In this video, we're going to look at some of the common misconceptions in AP Calculus AB and Calculus AB in general. First on the list involves points of inflection. If f double prime of x equals 0, then at x, f of x, there must be a point of inflection. This is wrong because, first of all, you could have a point of inflection at a point where f double prime of x is undefined or f double prime of x equals 0 as in this. But you must show that f double prime of x is changing signs at the value x where f double prime of x either equals 0 or it's undefined. And let me show you why this is. First, first of all, let's look at this one. In this case, f double prime of x does not equal 0. It's undefined at the value 0. But we have a section of the curve that's concave up when the x values are less than 0 and the curve is concave down when the x values are greater than 0. Since the function is continuous and uh, so the second derivative is changing signs, there's a change in concavity. So there is a point of inflection at x equals 0 even though f double prime of x does not equal 0. So that's it's very important to note that there can be a point of inflection when uh, when the second derivative is equal, undefined or equal to 0 but it must change signs. Now let's look at another example as to why it has to change signs. Let's look at this one for example. In this case we have f double prime of x that equals 0 at x equals 0 but when x values are lower than x equals 0 the curve is concave up. Also when x values are greater than 0 the curve is concave up. That means the concavity is not changing. Although f double prime of x equals 0 at this point there is no change in signs and no change in concavity at the value x equals 0. Therefore at x equals 0 there is no point of inflection. And you, you could use a sign chart to check that. And the same exact thing when looking for relative extrema. The only difference is when concerned with relative extrema we're looking at the first derivative not the second. And in this case also there can be a relative extrema when the first derivative is equal to zero or undefined. And in both cases you must and you must show that the sign changes. Let's look at why. In this case, the first one, f prime of x at x equals 1 is not equal to 0, but rather it's undefined because there is a, sure, a sharp turn or a sharp point at x equals 1. That means that the first derivative is undefined at that point. However, since the function goes from increasing to decreasing, the first derivative changes signs from positive to negative. That means at this point we have a relative maximum. And in this case we have f prime of 1 equals to 0, but there is no relative extrema because the function is increasing in all cases over here. So there is no relative extrema. It's very important to remember that we have a relative maximum when f prime of x changes from positive to negative and we have a relative minimum when f prime of x changes from negative to positive. And I usually remember it using a simple graph like this. Before this point we have the function increasing and afterwards the function is decreasing. That means the slope of the graph is initially positive and then it's negative and thus we have a relative maximum when the uh, f prime of x which is the slope of the graph goes from positive to negative 
and relative minimum the opposite is true for relative minimum we have the function initially decreasing then increasing and thus the slope of the graph is negative and then positive it's, if you use this graph it's very easy to remember another common error is related to the average rate of change so let's say we're looking for the average rate of change on the closed interval a to b you might be inclined to think that the average rate of change would be the instantaneous rate of change at the two endpoints a and b just divided by two no that is not true don't ever do that actually the average rate of change is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a not the first derivative of b or the first derivative of a but f of b minus f of a over b minus a and let's see why that is okay let's say we're trying to look at the average rate of change from a to b all we're essentially trying to do is find the slope of this line that connects the point from a to b now let's say this is this is, was uh, x equals a and x equals b how do we find the slope of a line well we take y2 minus y1 which in this case would be f of b minus f of a over x2 minus x1 which in this case is b minus a and that's essentially all the average rate of change really is another common mistake is concerning the washer method the washer method is not pi times integral from a to b outer radius minus inner radius squared but rather it's actually pi times integral from a to b of outer radius squared minus inner radius squared and I'll go over uh, how to work with the washer method in a separate video but always remember not to get confused with these two the next common error has to do with separable differential equations when a separable differential equation looks like this or however a, a separable differential equation looks always remember to put like terms together and y's always go with dy and x's always go with dx's so in this case we have dy over dx equals x over 3y squared we can easily put the like terms together by cross multiplying and then we end up with 3y squared dy equals x dx and then we can easily just integrate both sides always remember to separate the variables it's very important that you do that that's it for the first part of common errors in AP Calculus AB and Calculus AB in general subscribe if you haven't already for part 2 and if you like the video leave, leave a thumbs up and if you have any questions don't hesitate to comment below and I'll see you guys next time